Welcome back to another episode of On the Throne with Dick, and shout out to Senjin Boychuk for creating that beautiful intro outro music for us, and you can find him everywhere on the socials. We got to get him back. We had him on like in pod, uh, episode 14. We had him We had him a long, like a year and a half ago, we had him on, and we got to get him back. The guy's doing incredible things. I was just talking to him recently, uh, you know, started his, well, he's already been in a band, but they're, they're starting to go on tour, they're starting to make their own music, and we're going to try to get lyrics added to the the intro outro music and uh he he's down he wants to do it and he's he's expressed his interest in that and uh so find him everywhere on the socials youtube instagram tiktok facebook at senjin boychuk incredible guy and uh you know on this week's episode we have special guest rena friedman uh watts do i add the watts at the end or like yeah you can do it rena friedman watts from the Better Call Daddy podcast. You know, someone I've been chatting with on, uh, uh, what was it, Twitter? I guess yeah. you call it Twitter, formerly known as Twitter. It's X now. You know, uh, Elon Musk's space. Uh, you know, so you know, we've been meet, we've been chatting on there. Where, you know, uh, podcast networking, I guess you want to call it. Or, yeah, and it, it's an incredible, incredible, the internet's an incredible space to be doing all this networking and finding other shows and, you know, finding other people in that same space as you and supporting one another, you know, it's, it's been, it's been pretty incredible for that. A hundred percent, man. Twitter is the best for the podcasting community. I feel like. Oh yeah. Oh, for sure. You know, I, I've, I've found a lot of shows on there. I don't have time to listen to every one of them, but you know, like when I do get time, you know, I, I jump into one and I'll listen to parts of it over, over the course of a couple of days. Cause I don't, I can't listen to it all at once, especially if it's, you know, like mine, mine, my shows are sometimes two hours long, an hour and a half. I've had one that's close to three and it's like, I can't, I can't set aside three complete hours or even two complete hours at a time unless I'm driving somewhere. And even then it's like, all right, I'm going to listen to a bit of this for a little bit. Then I'm going to listen to a little bit of music. Then I'm going to make some phone calls and then I'm going to come back to the podcast and then I'm an equipment operator too. Right. So then it's like, when I'm in my equipment, all right. I also got some time there. I will listen to a bit of the podcast and, you know, so I, yeah, I, uh, it was, it was great, you know, linking up with you. I've listened to, uh, parts of two of your episodes. Now the latest one, 390, I think it is. And, uh, that one was pretty cool. And I can't remember what the other one was, but it was like one that, you know, when I was reading the captions, it, it, it spoke to me. Right. So I'm like, all right, I'll, it's, it's right here. It's right here. Anyways. Uh, it's, uh, one about OCD 370 comedy OCD and laughter as a therapy. Yeah. Thank you so much for listening. Yeah. I I love podcasting because you can listen whenever you have time. And I listen to podcasts when I drive or when I'm working out. And yeah, I, I also love the clips because the clips give you a little piece of what that person's going to be like. And then if you want to listen to more, you can go find that person. Yeah, that's what I use mine for, right? I, I I do the video, right? Because it goes up on YouTube, but also because I'm on TikTok and Instagram, I throw the I throw like teaser trailers up. I try to do so. My podcast comes out every Tuesday at like four thirty. I say four thirty p.m. It comes out. That's when it's scheduled to go out. But I I, I always say five because it takes you know it could take up that half an hour for it to distribute everywhere. So then you know, but I, I use. Uh, TikTok to put out the teaser trailers and then I'll throw them up on Instagram and I'll throw them up on YouTube sometimes. And then I'll throw them over on uh, threads. Threads is becoming a really good spot for podcasting too. Right. So I, um, you know, I, I, I do all that and, you know, um, I built my following first on the internet for like th two and a half, three years before I even started the podcast. So, you know, I've got like 250,000 followers across the internet and I built that following first. And then, you know, okay, how many of these can we convert to listeners, right? And it turns out, you know, quite a bit, quite a bit of them, you know. That's awesome. Yeah, I really got active on LinkedIn first because of corporate roles that I held. And so it was, I was in business development and I did some program manager roles and 
director of marketing roles where it was really my job to like reach out to people on LinkedIn. So that's my biggest following. But I have found that you can cross connect with people from Twitter to LinkedIn to Facebook to TikTok. So like you, I kind of I had a base and I even started a Facebook group called Business Laughs and LinkedIn because I wanted a place where the people that were on my show could kind of gather. I probably should call it Better Call Daddy because it's mainly like people that have been on my podcast, but you know, I believe that you have to laugh in business and be able to have fun and get things done. So I just kind of kept it with my LinkedIn theme because that's where I started my social media track. Yeah, well, absolutely. Um, you, how many followers do you have on LinkedIn? Because like your following on Twitter is like 7,000 or something like that. I think I'm in the 5,000 range on Twitter, but like 15,000 on LinkedIn. Wow. Wow. So like I've been on LinkedIn and I've had one or two of my videos uh, go viral on LinkedIn before. And unsuspectingly, I had no idea my stuff was over there. Right. Someone else had shared it. Ooh. And, yeah. I'm in the blue collar uh, niche or world and I work in the oil and gas industry. Right. And when I found my video was over there, someone shared it to me like your video's going viral over here right now. I'm like, oh, shit. So I went over and I looked. And like, it was all people that worked in the same area I work in and they were all like higher ups, right? Some people had an issue with what I had posted. So I had to really on TikTok and Instagram and Facebook, I can snap back at them and be like, Hey, you know, but over on LinkedIn, I could see what their job titles were. And I'm like, yeah, I got a, this is a minefield and I've got to really watch how I play this one. Right. And like some of them were like consultants or safety officers or they were high up. Right. And it was like, Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. Maybe I won't snap back at this person. Maybe I'll just be like, Hey, you know what? Sorry. You're right. And, uh, I'll try to be more mindful next time I say something, you know, and, and I started posting the podcast over there too, and getting impressions and, and, and follows over there. I don't have that many followers over there. I don't use it as much as I should, but you know, it's, it's definitely something that I post on and I think it helps with my views and my downloads. So, Oh, for sure. And to be honest, all of these platforms are just tools. Yeah. hundred You know, why not post your same clips? It's a little bit different. Like you kind of got to understand the language of each platform. Like Twitter is, you know, you put like a line, you know, and Facebook, maybe three or four lines and LinkedIn people do more of like a blog style, you know, they tell you what the video is about. They ask a question to the audience. They wrap it up with a call to action. You know, it's a little yeah. bit different per platform, but you can use those same clips. Some people put the same thing on every platform, but if you just make it a little bit different on each platform, I really yeah. think you, you can use these platforms to your advantage. Hey, amen to that. You know, um, I'm guilty sometimes of being like, okay, I only have enough time for this. And like working, I work over a hundred hours a week and I work away from home and, you know, all hours of the day, you know, it, it's, I could be out for 20 hours. I could be out for 16. So like, and there are times where like, all right, the podcast comes out this week. Sometimes it, when it drops at four 30 that afternoon, I look, I'm like, I haven't even uploaded it yet. It's two o'clock in the afternoon. Damn. Right. So I, I stop whatever I'm doing right there. I just upload it quickly. And I'm like, all right, it goes out in two hours. Cool. And then there, you know, there are times where I can't, I don't have enough time to put a trailer out for that week. Right. So like, you know, it lands and when it drops, it drops how it drops and it does how it does. I can't control that. Right. And um, I've been more mindful of that the last couple of weeks. I'll start like, all right, I have a couple hours right now. I want to relax, but like this is going to take care of itself a little bit. Right. So like, all right, I kind of know what was said and at what point of the podcast. So like, all right, I'll go to that point. I'll do a quick like 10 second, 15 second trailer, sometimes 30. I have a minute to play with. So like, if it's too long, it doesn't do that well. But whatever. So I, I make it, I throw it out. I, I set it to, I set it like a, 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 you know, a schedule. And then I'm like, all right, I, I'm good. It'll it's scheduled to go out here. I've just done the work and, and here we go. Right. And, and so, but a lot of the work I did in the beginning when it first dropped, uh, like two, almost two years ago, uh, we're coming up, this will be episode like 92, 93. We're almost at episode 100, right? We're almost there once a week for, you know, 90 weeks. Right. And so, all that work I did 90 weeks ago where I was right there when it dropped and I made sure, okay, I'm busy right now, but it's dropping right now. All that work I did pushing it out in the beginning is taking care of itself now, right? Like, uh, you know, um, now I don't have to be right there to push it out. Whereas, you know, people have it scheduled to, oh, his episode drops now, it automatically downloads, right? I follow him now. I know, and, and there's a lot of, even if I don't follow him, I know it comes out every Tuesday at five o'clock. 
and I'm going to be there to download it, maybe listen to it here. Right. So it's, you know, all the work I did at the beginning is paying off. So that's awesome. I have to say that in the beginning I did three episodes a week and then the next year I got a couple of clients and I was producing their podcast and I cut it down to two. Wow. Then the more work I did for other people, I only released one a week and Sometimes I release it on a Monday. Sometimes I release it on a Wednesday and I give myself grace. I think the only way to stay with it as long as I have one is to have my dad saying, Hey, even if you're just doing this for me, it's worth it. And two, not being such a stickler. I'm a mom of four. You know, I have client work. I have a husband. I have a life. If you release one a week, that is consistency enough. And your people that are subscribed, they will be hungry for when you release it. I mean, I give you a lot of credit for, you know, keeping to a schedule and using these tools to keep you on track. But I tell new podcasters, don't beat yourself up. If you release one a week, it doesn't have to be at the same time on the same day. Yeah. And also try new things like this, this week, I was just on the old man's podcast right before this, where I, I did a live on Podbean. I had never done a live podcast. And a couple of days ago, I did my first space that I hosted. I had co-hosted ones in the past, but interacting with your people and with your listeners is a whole nother level of intimacy. Oh yeah. Um, I've noticed that being on the internet, on TikTok and Instagram and Facebook, right? your content draws followers in, right? Like when you post, they're like, okay, I'm going to follow this person consistently post there. They want to follow you, right? When you go live, when you do a space, when you do things like a podcast, right? Those videos that you put out is like maybe 30 seconds of your life that they're seeing and, and it attracts them. When you do a podcast, when you do a space, when you go live, you go live or space for as long as you want to, right? That's how when they get to know you right? Your, your videos draw them in your lives. They get to know you personally. And, 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 you know, that's what that makes them like you or not like you, you know what I like? Okay. This person's funny for 30 seconds. What's this person like for an hour and a half? Right. I've learned little things too. in going live, like on my first live, I didn't realize if you hit the mute, you were going to mute, like even the person talking, but luckily like the person who was talking, like got that I was new to hosting it. So yeah. she, repeated what she said when I cut her out for a second. And then two, I didn't realize that if you're on a live and you say a bad word, that literally AI is listening and they'll cut you off the call. Oh yeah. It's, it's nuts. It's, it's crazy. Um, what you were saying about Podbean, I, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not like, uh, my podcast doesn't, isn't distributed through Podbean. Am I allowed to go on Podbean and go live? Or is that just something only like people with Podbean can can go live on like you know what i mean i'm through Streamyard and and whatnot i don't i don't know what the podbean thing is i'm still learning and, you know this is what's co cool about you know uh interacting with other podcasters who use different uh programs and such like that right like what is podbean and 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 can i use it to my advantage too even if i'm not you know my podcast isn't hooked up through them Yes, I believe that you can join a live podcast if you call in. If you type in the chat that you would like to join the conversation, yeah. then the host can give you a call in. And it it's similar to Twitter Spaces. It's similar to Clubhouse. It's similar to LinkedIn Live. It I've, has similar I've features. LinkedIn yet. I've tried. Um, I can do live streams of the podcast. I've done a few of them. Right. Where you said, you know, you've done, you know, one, you did three a week and then, you know, two a week and then once a week where, you know, I used to do uh, bonus episodes and I want to get back into bonus episodes. I just, you know, I'm really busy right now. Right. I'm, you know, I've got all this content. I've got the podcast. I'm, I'm trying to get other people to come on my podcast. And, and, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm always, you know, searching the internet to, to make connections. And then I got to be a dad and a husband too. Right. And it, it's a lot. So, you know, um, I, I, I'm trying to get more bonus episodes, but as I get further and further, I'm trying not to have too many repeat guests either. Right? I don't want to have, you know, different people. I've had a couple repeat guests now, but, uh, if I want to have repeat guests, I could do live stream episodes and, and bonus episodes even. Right. But, um, we're, we're going to get back into that. And then, you know, uh, live streaming them. I've done, I think four live stream events, right. And, uh, over the last year and a half. And I can live stream to three places and they recently made it so you can live stream to Instagram as well from, from the platform. Right. So 
Uh, I've, I've done one on Instagram. I want to do more. Plus now that I have the laptop, I can, I can get off the phone that I used to record everything on my phone. But like, then, you know, I can record it on my phone, do Instagram and go live stream. Also, as I'm interviewing like a guest on TikTok live on my podcast page. Right. So like, you know, people, I have not yet live streamed a podcast from the podcast page on TikTok. And, you know, that's something, you know, I'm excited to do and I'm, I'm looking forward to, I, I don't know when to do it yet. I'm, I'm waiting for the right time and maybe there is no right time. Maybe the right time is now. Right. So yeah, we're, we're going to do something like that. And I can even, I can even do just uh, a TikTok live and I can save that video. And that is the podcast, you know, like that could be the bonus episode. That could be anything, that, anything I want. I'm the host. I can do it. Anything I want. Right. Like it's my show. Right. So um, I gotta, I gotta figure that out. I gotta figure that out a little more. So I've seen content creators do that where yeah. they're recording on one platform and then they're live streaming on another. Yeah. Why not try yeah. it? See yeah. how your audience likes it. Absolutely. And, and especially with the live chat going, like when I've live streamed the podcast before the live chat's going, it adds a new element to it. Right. Cause like I had, I don't know if you know who Ed the Sock is. He was a hand puppet on, on much music, uh, back in the late nineties, early two thousands. And, you know, we did a live stream of that and he was interacting with the comments in there. And I, I had, um, technical difficulties where my podcast cut out for a little bit on my end and I, I disappeared and he kept it going and, and he interacted with comments going on down below. Right. Cause we were live streaming it. And when I, when I listened back to it, I thought I was going to have to edit that part out. No, like it was incredible what he did for that. Like two minutes I was gone. Right. So yeah, it was pretty I love that. <clears throat> Excuse me. I think even, you know, with my first Twitter space, I invited a couple other Twitter space hosts to the room yeah. and I called them up as co-hosts and they kind of had my back. So yeah. it had the element of like being a first space, which I think people were into. But then since I had been to other people's spaces, they were like, oh, hey, here's some housekeeping items. Yeah. I, I love that. You know, we're, we're all supporting each other, right? Like, you know, sometimes when you're recording a podcast with someone who doesn't necessarily have their own podcast, they, they, it's all on you to keep the, keep the show going. Right. And like, you know, how, how sometimes it's difficult you get, sometimes you look up and you're like, Oh, it's only been five fucking minutes. You know, like how, how am I going to keep this going for another hour? Right. And then there's times where you look up and it's already been an hour, right? Like, this is incredible. And when you're recording with someone else who's also in that space, right? Like it's already been 18 minutes, right? Like you can keep, you, you can, you know what it takes to keep the flow going. Like we can have a conversation. So there's not much dead space in there and, or none at all. And, you know, I say something and you're like, Hey, you know what? The podcaster in me knows like, Hey, I got to keep this going and keep the flow going. And, and same with me, right? Like, you know, uh, when I'm on other people's shows, Sometimes it's like, all right, all right. I'm not the man in the hypothetical seat today. I don't have to do all the work. They can talk to me and I could just like flow through it. Right. And, but I, and on the other hand of that, like, I know like when they talk to me, I also have to be interesting enough for them to keep going. Right. So, you know, it's pretty, it's pretty interesting. I, I love this, this community and, and, and the podcasting uh, avenue It's it's been, it's been a lot of fun and it's helped me you know, also sharpen my thinking skills and my people skills and, and just talking in general. Right. I love that. And another thing too, alongside with what you were talking about earlier, Instagram live can be a great follow-up. Like if you don't want to do a whole nother episode with someone, it's funny. I recently had like a past guest come do an Instagram live with me and we actually scheduled it like months in advance, but I knew she had a book release coming up. Yeah. And so I was like, Hey, she's releasing a book and we've done a previous episode together. And then she brought the person on the Instagram live that she wrote the book about. So it was like a deeper story because we added somebody to the mix. But then I was like, hey, if you want to hear the backstory of the author, I've done that episode already. And then she was like, is your dad going to respond to this episode too? I was like, no, you know, this isn't a podcast. This is just a, a bonus, but I might share it with them, you know? Yeah. Speak, speaking of your dad and, and, and his feedback on your episodes, I love that about your podcast. Um, you know, in case anyone here, you know, doesn't hasn't listened to Better Call Daddy before, can, can you let, let's jump into that? Can you explain what your podcast is about and how your dad is incorporated into that or how he participates? I 
I love that. I love that part about it. Right. And it's, it's, it's pretty great. Thank you. Yeah. So my Better Call Daddy podcast is an interview style podcast where I interview interesting and controversial people. I then cut that part down, share it with my dad separately. And then he and I have a conversation at the end where he weighs in with his intergenerational perspective and he adds his two cents at the end of every episode. That's that's pretty old. How old are you? I am 44. 44. And how old's your dad? 68. 68. So that's wow. You know, so that that is really he's a boomer and you're you're like uh gen x kind of you know elder millennial maybe exactly uh, i'm yeah. kind of right there on the on the line i yeah. i consider myself to be more gen x though okay so your dad's a boomer right and and as we know boomers aren't exactly like tech savvy and they don't really understand this whole space right they don't get it to them you know showing up every day going to work grinding it out, putting your nose to the grindstone and just being loyal to the company was everything. Right. And oh, yeah. so for them to see us in this space, finding new ways to spend our time and make money. And that, 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 that doesn't involve leaving the house and being loyal to someone other than yourself. Right. It's a whole new perspective for them. It's a whole new thing. And your dad has embraced that. That's incredible. He's so into it. It's interesting that you brought up the word loyalty because he ran a company with his parents in the blue collar space for 40 plus years. He yeah. worked in a factory. And what's interesting is now, you know, he has sold that space and uh, people that worked for my dad for 20 and 30 years have created little factories of their own. And my dad does some consulting work and, you know, he's sold off all his parts. And he sent me a video today of a kid that was like a grandkid of somebody who my dad knew. And he was like, look, this guy is like manually spinning on a lathe that was mine and, you know, making a cylinder. And this kid is 17 years old. And I was like, ah, I just love that. And my dad loves that. And that is legacy. And, you know, the manufacturing space is really still family run. Yep. Yep. That's huge. Uh, that's crazy that your dad was blue collar, right? It fits somehow we've managed to fit this into my niche, you know? Yeah. I mean? Your dad is part of your podcast. He's blue collar. He grinded it out for 40 years. Right. And he eventually got to the point where we're all trying to get to is, you know, like, Hey, you know what? I'm, I'm able to sit back, retire and enjoy the rest of my life, you know? And that's, you know, really there's, I talked to so many blue collar people on here, right? Like this podcast, you know, it's turned into, it evolved a couple times along the way without me really noticing it, right? Someone else and a few other people, I guess, have brought it up to me. They're like, hey man, like you realize your podcast is sort of, sort of shifted and for the better, right? Like um, at first I was just doing it to shoot the shit with people in the oil and gas industry, right? Like um, I wanted oil, oil field people on and because that's my my area, right? And and then I realized, hey, you know what? Like we can only talk about the oil rigs and pipelines and so and stuff like that so much before it just gets exhausting, right? So you know what I mean? Um, so it's good that we can still talk about that. We still have a lot of those people on, but it's turned into okay, I want people in all blue collar industries on. I want to talk about, you know, how you got into it why you got into it, what it took to get to where you are or and where you see yourself going. And then we jump into, you know, things like how has this affected your mental health, right? Because mental health is huge in the blue collar industry. It's huge everywhere. But like, you know, you get guys that are working their lives away 100 hours plus a week or, you know, stuff like that, being away from home for so many days at a time, you know, sure, they're making wheelbarrow fulls of money, but like, the cost of living has risen, you know, maybe they've gotten a divorce and, you know, most of that money now it has to be okay. You know, I have to, I'm no longer making, I'm making that money, but like, it's no longer all mine, right. All mine and my family's right. I have to split it here and here. And, you know, maybe they've suffered an injury on the job, right. That has affected their headspace. You know what I mean? And, um, their shit that we go through, you know, especially in the oil and gas industry, we work in minus 40, we work in minus 50, we work in plus 50, plus 40. We were gone for weeks at a time. I spent six months of the time away from my family at times because of the pandemic, right? The pandemic screwed that up a lot. You know, um, my wife was pregnant at the beginning, um, in 2019, it was July, 2019. She told me she's pregnant. Okay, cool. We just moved across the country and I was still out West working. Right. And 
you know, I, I didn't see her from the end of June of 2019 until October, right? When I got home, she was almost half done. She was half cooked, right? The baby, you know, oh, I'm pregnant. And then I didn't see her again until Christmas time. And then the next time I saw her after that, four days before, three days before it was a pandemic and my kid was being born, right? So like I missed almost the entire pregnancy. How That weighed on my mind, right? And and shit like that, right? So like, you know, the, the mental health aspect of that, missing your family, missing everything you love and hold dear to you while you're grinding away for them, right? And, and you know, that's what we talk about on here. We, we have a good time and we, we laugh a lot, but also there's like, how has this affected you, right? And, you know, so there's a lot of that and, and I'm having a good time with it. I'm having, we talk to oil and gas workers. We talk to, you know, guys who work on merchant mariners, guys who work on, on, on ships, guys who are equipment operators, welders, electricians, you know, all that stuff. And, uh, also it evolved again with, you know, I had uh, Riker on, uh, she, she is in law enforcement out in, uh, central Eastern Canada and she's not in blue collar, but she's a content creator in the space who has a big following and and knows what this takes. And she's interesting to me. So also I have people that are interesting to me. You don't have to be blue collar either. She's still going through mental health shit, right? Like she still suffers and she's very open about it. And she's funny, you know? And, and then, you know, so we had another podcaster on, Kathy Kinzora from the History of the 90s podcast. One of my favorite podcasts I've been listening to since long before I had my own podcast, right? Her husband, or was it her brother, work in oil and gas, and I had no idea, right? So I would just listen to her podcast, wanted her on. She came on. We have a connection, a blue-collar connection once again, just like you. That's so cool. Yeah, I feel like even if you don't, you know somebody who does, so it can yeah. play into your life that way. Yeah. You know, uh, I, my dad and I were both recently on this podcast. It's uh, the Special Fathers Network which the whole podcast is interviewing dads that have kids with either disabilities or special needs. And even though, you know, my dad had, uh, you know, normal or typical children, you know, my grandmother, my dad's mom's sister got hit by a car and, you know, was disabled her whole life. And then my mom's dad, uh, you know, his dad was held up and shot in the head and he was a dad of six. And, you know, even if it isn't directly your situation, like everybody has been affected by the disabled community or, you know, the special needs community and has a story of, about how that's touched their life. So you can weave that in. And even with the Better Call Daddy show, like sometimes I want to interview a podcaster that I love or a content creator that I love, and they might not want to talk about their daddy story, but even them saying that or one thing that they learned from their dad, you can kind of angle that in and, and it can still be a through line. Absolutely. No, I. I am enjoying your show so far. Like, you know, I, I'm definitely going to, I have a four hour drive tomorrow to take. Right. So like in today, I'm probably going to disappear for about 45 minutes to an hour. And I'm probably going to, I got to go on a drive a little bit and I'm going to go and listen to what I can. You know? And then tomorrow, four hours, I could probably listen to two episodes in that time. Right. Uh, you know, so it's, it's, this is an incredible space, you know, and I love that, you know, it's what, uh, what, what does your husband do? It's funny because we actually moved to Texas because he got an oil and gas job. <laughs> Shut up. That's 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 crazy. <laughs> but he ended up switching fields. Now he's in aerospace. But what's interesting is I yeah, he's always wanted to work in space. And Houston is very much either oil and gas or aerospace. And Houston, we have a problem. Exactly. That's crazy. He's very excited about his new role. But um I, since my husband got into oil and gas here, decided to volunteer for OGGN. I don't know if you've heard of them, the Oil and Gas Network podcast. They've got like 23 podcasts on their network. Wow. They're based out of Houston. I should introduce you to Mark LaCour. Yeah. So he was sponsoring a podcast event, and it was one of the first events I went to in Houston. And so I was like, oh, let me check this guy out. I followed him on social, and then I saw on his Facebook, he was like, you know, looking for podcasters who want to be a part of my media booth at these two oil and gas events. I was like, why not? So I signed up. And then the first time I noticed there was more podcasts than the second event. So I was like, all right, I obviously made the cut. And I was like, look, whoever comes to the booth, 
somebody's got to have a daddy story. Somebody wants to tell me about their role in oil and gas. So I just interviewed people that came to the booth that were interested in telling their story. Today, after this podcast, one of the senior VPs that sponsored his booth is taking me out to lunch. Can, do you know how wild this is, Kay? Like, I say this all the time, right? Um, the opportunities that are coming to people that are like online, like making content, making podcasts, well, podcasts is content. The amount of opportunities is nuts. And people are like, oh, you're just getting lucky. No, you're, you're, you're inviting the opportunity, yeah. right? By being in this space, we're inviting the opportunity for this, right? We're saying, hey, I'm here. Look at me, right? And if you put out good quality content and, and, and you have something interesting to say, you're knocking on the devil's door. And one day, it doesn't have to be the devil, but like one day someone's going to answer that door, right? Um, I, I talk about this all the time, actually. I had an interesting opportunity pop up two years ago. I wasn't ready for it and I let it slide, right? I, I kicked myself a little bit for that, but everything that's happened since then, I can't kick myself for it, right? I, I can't. You know, um, OGR Scintilla, he's a content creator. Uh, I, I'll show you his stuff. He was on another podcast, Gord Kitely's podcast, the second act podcast. I've been on that one twice. He is in the same spot, place I live. He lives a couple hours south of me. And incredible guy. One of my best friends. We bounce ideas off each other. You would like his podcast. It's called the second act podcast. It's people that started off doing something else, but then they, 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 they're like, hey, I don't have to do this. I want to do this right and they've changed their life around a little bit and and they're not they're not in the same space they started off in right um so OGR Scintilla was on there and he's like in when you're in this when you're doing stuff like this a million opportunities are going to come your way and you can't take them all right you just can't right but the ones you let slide learn from it right because more opportunities are going to come your way Right. Know which ones to say no to and which ones to walk away from. And I think I've learned from that a lot. Um, that opportunity that opportunity I let slide. It was a company that I work on a back truck. Not anymore. I I that's actually another conversation. I just got offered another job based off from, from social media, like a guy, a connection I had made. He somehow worked his way into 25% ownership of another company. And he's like, hey. Uh, are you interested in a job? Like, he's like, I know you can do this stuff. Um, I know you and we've met before. And he actually took me out for lunch yesterday and I had to drive an hour and a half to go meet him. But he offered me another job, almost double what I'm, what I'm currently making and a better schedule. I'm working less. I'm not going to be as working as many hours. I'm on a schedule and be home every 20 days for 10 days. Right now I'm doing five weeks on to have maybe a week off, right? Four, four, four to five weeks on. So this is going to be a better quality of life. And so, you know, the opportunity was he wanted me to, he's like, Hey, you don't look like a guy that want to work, that wants to work in the field forever. I'm like, not really. He's like, this is what I'm going to offer you. And he offered me a job being his social media guy, making content for his company. And he'd pay me, you know, a little more than I was making. And I would be home almost every night. I'd have to travel around and make content and do all this stuff. And I wasn't ready for that. It scared the shit out of me, to be honest with you. And I'm like, wow, I'm not ready for that. Now I am ready for something like that. Now I'm I'm there, right? And uh, so yeah, but this opportunity that I'm getting right now, like this is this is good for my family. This will be a lot of fun, and it's because of a connection I made off of here, right? And uh, yeah, we're 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 learning. You know, we're this is this is new territory for everyone, right? Um, you know, whether you've been here for years or not the way this is going is new territory. I mean, my dad always says that an education isn't free one and two, like you have to measure not just things like on dollars and cents and how much money you're making, but these opportunities are priceless. Like it is amazing to be able to interview influencers or people that you look up to, but Look, yeah. I've now gotten two media badges to conferences that cost thousands to get into and all the gear set up for me, all the mics are set up for me. And he's like, hey, any of oil and gas event that you want to attend, just let me know. You've got the media passes now. Like, you know what's insane about this? So you have an oil and gas friend that you're going to hang out with for lunch after this, right? I'm in oil and gas. You know what I mean? Like, uh, 
put in a good word for me, but you know what this <laughs> does, right? Like the, okay, we're going to get into this. Do you know, okay. And this is all ties in and I'm doing a little early, but do you know what viscosity is? I've heard of it. So viscosity is the, the resistance to flow, uh, uh you know, um, of, uh, um, a solids resistance to flow and whatnot. So the podcast is sponsored by the mud man. The mud man deals in viscosity, which is, you know, how thick is the load going down hole on a rig. Right. And he's changed the game with all his, his gear and whatnot. Um, so the mud man sponsors the podcast and he has helped me out so much with a mic and a headset and the laptop, the new MacBook pro, which I'm still saying is new. And I can get off the phone and record on the computer and have better quality and better shows in general. The mud man, um, said to me, there's a guy in Texas that I want to have on my podcast right? Big guy in Texas was a part of something crazy. He blocked my number when I asked him if he wanted to come on. He, I, and I understand, I understand what happened was tragic and people died and it, it hits, it hurts home. It, it hits home and it hurts. And I, I didn't hear a no though. So I'm still calling him on everyone else's number. Every time I get a chance, I think he might've blocked all of Canada at this point. <laughs> right? But the mud man said that if I can get him on my podcast, he would fly me to Texas to have him on to do that one in person. We've only done one in-person podcast so far. Um, the mud man wants into Texas. He wants to expand into Texas, right? So wouldn't it be crazy, right? Let me help. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I made this connection with you who has a connection with this oil and gas person. And I, and I know the mud man who has a connection to me. So like, we're all like connecting each other right now. This is insane. You know, what I, I would mean? love if I could make that happen for you. Let's try to offline about that. <laughs> Let's so strategize. Much. Even if this doesn't happen, the fact that it was still a possibility, you know, that wasn't there yesterday, wasn't there an hour ago. You know what I mean? And this is what I love about the podcasting space, about the internet. I always say it. The internet is a wild ride, right? Oh, yeah. Hang on tight. Like, a week ago, two weeks ago now, maybe I made an ad for a restaurant in town, right? They're Car Carl's Jr. You probably know them. They're they're mm -hmm. all over the place, but there's they're not all over the place in Canada. They had me make an ad for them, and they were and they are like, well, what 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 kind of compensation do you want? I'm like I never ever had that happen. I did another ad for another restaurant. They didn't pay me. They they it gave me clout. Right. It, it opened that door because that right, Carl's Jr. seen what I did for these guys. And they're like, hey, here you go. Right. That other restaurant gave me a free meal. Right. Like, here, here's a free meal. Cool. Hey, I got to do it. In turn, this restaurant, Carl's Jr. seen what I did for them. And it opened up the door. Like, how much do you want? Well, I don't know. I don't I don't know. So they they threw a number at me and I'm like, yeah, like, of course. You know, like for three videos. And then what that happened there, that guy that I was talking about earlier, OGR Scintilla, he's like six hours south of me. He made an ad for them too, but he he's like a parody rapper kind of thing. He makes parody songs. He made an ad for them too. And I saw his and I'm like, oh shit. And we got to talking. I'm like, mine's like the $5 bin at Walmart compared to yours, right? And he's like, dude, I had no idea you were doing one for them. And I had no idea he was doing one for them either. And then he's like, I have an idea. He's like, he's been on my podcast, right? Back in the early days, he was on my podcast. I'm going to get him on again. And he's like, I'm going to send a message. He sent a message seeing that if we could team up and do one together for them right away, they answer back. Like we had no idea you guys knew each other. Yes. We are down for that. Oh my right? God. I want to team up with that guy. Yeah. So they're like, yeah, of course. Right. So now we're going to come up with something together and, and who knows where that leads to. Right. This is all the connections. As Gord always says, it's the it's the six degrees of separation. You know what I mean? A hundred percent. Yes. Especially with content creators. There's yeah. a, a guy on Twitter. His name is Jay Yao. And he is the editor for the James Altucher show, which is a pretty big show. I actually got to interview James. And I saw that James, I saw that Jay posted something on Twitter like, hey, if there's a brand that you love and that you would like to make an ad for. I would love to help different creators create yep. ads. So I reached out to him and was like, Hey, I won a name cheap contest where they redid my whole website. I would love to make an ad for them. 
let's get playful and the two of us can do it together. Namecheap loved it. I ran it on my podcast for like six months. They ended up giving me a kickback for everybody that signed up with my code and they made a second site for me. Then from there, that led to me doing another one for a couple more brands. I have one with Jay currently running on my podcast for the Headliner app. Headliner has like, yeah, promoted me now and I've worked with them. It's led to me also like getting sponsors for events. So I connected with Riverside.fm, who I love and use. It's like, if you love tools, you should reach out to these brands that you actually use because they're looking for content creators that want to partner with them. So Riverside pitched the idea to me. They said, you know, we do different meetups with different podcasters. Would you ever want to do a meetup? I was like, I go to meetups all the time. I know lots of local creators. Sure. So I I reached out to a bar locally and was like, Hey, I have a sponsor that'll pick up the first round of drinks. I reached out to a photographer friend, a videographer. I was like, Hey, if you want to, you know, get your work in front of more people, I'll shout you out that you did all the work on this event. So I got a free videographer, free photographer, somebody to pick up the first round of drinks. I got 50 people in the room. Then I had other sponsors reaching out like, hey, you want to do another one of those meetups? We'll sponsor the next one. Wow. That's incredible. Speaking of producers, she said something about a producer back uh, a little bit. You know, uh, Jay, I believe his name was. Yeah. So I noticed this and I saw it in your headline on Twitter. This is interesting. You were a producer on the Jerry Springer show. I was. That's this where I got my start. Insane. Yeah. See what I mean? Like, that's crazy. Like, what was Jerry? Did you, you obviously spent time with Jerry Springer? Yep. There's so much about Jerry Springer that I love learning about. Like, he was the mayor of what, Cleveland at one point? Cincinnati. In time? Cincinnati. Yeah. Cincinnati, Cleveland. The same, same, same state. Uh, uh, that was close. Almost. Yeah. Yeah. That's insane to me. Like, I'm talking with someone right now that spent time with Jerry Springer. Who knew? Jerry, Jerry. You you obviously know Steve. Steve has his own show now, right? Like, yep. That that's insane. Like, how did you get into that? And and why did did you go until the show was done, or did you leave at a different time, or what? Yeah. Well, I started off as an intern, and I went from intern to producer in one season, and that was my first job out of college. So I was also working 100-hour weeks like you're talking about. I was living and breathing that environment. (laughs) Wow. That must have been insane. Like, you know, like, you know, my mom is dating my sister's dad, and they're both sleeping with my cousin, you know, like shit like that, you know, like that, that shit's crazy to me, you know, shit that I like shows that I grew up watching, like Maury, right. And, you know, stuff like you are not the father and and Jerry Springer and, you know, things I grew up watching, you know, which is crazy. You know, I'd get off to school and, uh, and Jerry Springer would be on and my dad would just be like, like, he didn't understand it. He didn't know if he should let me watch it or ban it. You know what I mean? But like, it was entertaining, you know? And, that's insane that I'm talking with someone who is in all these spaces, but also produced the Jerry Springer show. Yeah, it was a great time to be alive. That's for sure. And it was really, I feel like the beginning of reality TV. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we've talked, I've, I've, I've listened to podcasts about that. The history of the nineties podcast actually talked about that. Like everything that led up to that was like, this was kind of like the start, right? Like yeah. started here and a little, and, and someone else kind of like, ran with it and like Montel Williams a little bit. And, you know, um, Oprah actually had like the opportunity to get into that, but she wanted to like take a different route and probably for the best for her, you know, because of how things. She didn't out. want to be equated with Jerry Springer. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> no, no, that's insane to me. So she was like, please don't put me in a league with him. Yeah. <laughs> but also shout out to the late Jerry Springer, right? Would he pass away last year now? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I actually got to interview him about a year before. And on the podcast. Yeah, episode 210. And that I'm honestly going. like made podcasting worth it for me. It yeah, was so I'm amazing going. to be able to I'm thank him. Person. Yeah. And just to kind of like get validated by him, you know, he was like, I love the idea with your dad. And yeah. And there were so many questions I always wanted to know, like how much Jerry did you really know about what went into getting those people on stage? And, you know, after doing it 27 years, he, he knew what was going on. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. You know, like good for you. That's, that's, just, that's incredible. Like, I don't know what, what else, what else did you do in your life that we don't know about the Jerry Springer, you know, like you're, 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 are you selling houses or looking for a house? I'm looking for one. <laughs> I could never do real estate. Oh my God. 
It's uh, although I do think that real estate is probably going to be taken over by AI. It's still such a game. Like the seller, they want to get as much as possible, and the buyer wants to get it for as little as possible. And you're like, how much did they buy it for? You know, how many times did they put it on the market? How many days has it really been on the market? It's just such a non-transparent game. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god. Like, see, I knew about the Cherry Springer thing. I wanted to bring that up the lunch you're about to have is insane right to me like yeah I i'll tell you i met this guy he was sponsoring the oggn podcasting booth at one of the conferences i was attending he's from wings Tra wings global travel his name is chris martin and yeah he's a dad and it was really cool i had never heard of wings global travel so i wanted to know about his time in the travel industry and what countries he had been to but also like you know, this guy is traveling how many months a year and how do you balance that with being a dad? Did you want to be a dad? Are they interested in what you do? Do they want to get on the mic? You know, what do they think of their dad? Have you had, have you had to eat weird foods? You know, what is it like going in all of these different cultures and being American? So, so many interesting things that you can just ask with curiosity. Like I knew nothing about oil and gas. So people from the oil and gas industry, like you said, you hear it all the time, but somebody from a different industry, when I'm like, what do you do in oil and gas? What part of the line do you work on? You know, then they're interested in talking to you because you have no background. Wow. Wow. Um. So your husband, okay, here, this is, this is a new sponsorship that I just, I just worked out two days ago, right? So like your husband was in oil and gas, right? In the blue collar space. What was the most important part of keeping him safe every day? Like what, what part did he would like when he had to get his own PPE, what did he spend money on? What was there no cheaping out on? I think that they're big on safety. Yeah. Yeah. Like the, boots, the boots, right? Like yeah, the, the boots, the, 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 boots. the headgear. Yeah. The, all that. So I recently was talking to a company based out of Sherwood Park, Alberta here. And they're, they ship internationally, but it's called Brasco safety and Brasco safety. You know, they, they, they deal in PPE, right. Of all your boots, your gloves, hard hats, coveralls, all the safety gear you can think of. Right. And I think this is huge for my podcast because, you know, blue collar and blue collar workers need PPE. Right. So you know, if you're looking for PPE, if you need a new pair of boots, if you need new gloves, new sh safety shades, new if you're if your hard hat's cracked, you need a new one. You take a bonk on the head. Brasco Safety has it right. www.brascosafety.com right. And you know, for all your PPE needs, I gotta work on this one a little bit. I haven't really thought about it a too much, right? But um, they ship internationally too, right? So if you go on www.brascosafety.com and if you live in Texas, Pennsylvania, you live in anywhere in Canada, you live in Florida, you live in, I don't know, if, they don't know if they'd go to like, you know, Haiti, right? Like a Haiti's Well, Haiti of, will come to you here. Haiti will come. Oh, shit. Right? So like, you know, you go on www.brascosafety.com. You're looking for boots, high vis, vis vests, hard hats, gloves right? They got you. They're there. And if you use code FROST10, you save 10% on all your PPE, your boots. They got Ariats. They got Baffins, which I strictly use Baffins, the Baffin Ice Bears. They're my favorite. I'll wear them year round, right? Working on a back truck, getting wet, walking in puddles, getting into tanks and cleaning them. I need rubber boots. So I, I stick with the Baffins. The Baffin Ice Bears, they have my back and I, I don't wear anything else. So check out Brasco, Brad, brascosafety.com. Type it in on Google. Go on their website. They're on. They're they're here on uh, Instagram. They're at Brasco Safety, and uh, yeah, it's it's right here, right right here. It's Brasco Safety on on Instagram, and use code Frost ten. Save yourself ten percent on all your on all your work boots. All your work boots. Save ten percent on your work boots, on your gloves, on everything. It's it's crazy to me that this is where we're at. You know, like things are happening. You know, you're putting in the work. Like I said earlier, you keep knocking on the door, and someone's gonna answer. I was just thinking they'll keep your daddy safe. <laughs> they'll keep your daddy safe. Hey, call your dad. Tell him you know it's time.
get I, he might not work anymore but hey you never know uh when i'm retired i'm gonna want to buy new hard hats all the time not not really but like, <laughs> well he's still doing like consulting work because it's it's interesting some of the people that work for my dad now their kids are learning these yeah. manual skills which is so yeah. cool to see and we yeah. want to keep them safe too daddies keep and it. sons Daddies want to keep their kids safe and kids want to keep their daddy safe. Daddies call your kids and kids, you better call daddy. <laughs> yes, it's important. I mean, because you know what? You can learn a thing or two from an old man. Uh, oh, my favorite people on site are old men, right? Like some of the old men on site are a little grumpy, but they've got stories to tell. They're, you know, I'm becoming that old man on site. I'm befriending the young kids now, right? I remember I was 20 years old and looking up to that. 35 40 year old guy thinking man that guy's been through some shit at 35 years old i've been through some shit you know and it's like you know i still have a lot more to go through so i i'm looking now to the 50 year olds right like before it was like i i could relate more with the 30 30 ish year olds and the maybe the pushing 40 year olds on site now i'm really now i'm relating to the 50 year olds on site right like i'm looking ahead to them to see oh man i can relate to both sides is what i'm getting at i guess i've been there you know, I've been there. I know what you're going through and I'm here where you were at. And, you know, I'm relating to you now because I know why you're grumpy. I know why you're, you know what I mean? I know why you're, you are the way you are because I'm going through it. Right. Um, you know, so I'm relating to both sides now a little bit more. And I think that's, that's so interesting. And, you know, so it's been, it's been a lot of fun. Can I ask you like a personal question? Did you think about being a dad? Is that something that you wanted or like, Ooh, I'm going to be a dad now. <laughs> so no, um, growing up, I never wanted kids, right? I didn't want to get married. I didn't want to have kids. None of that. Then I met my wife and then, you know, we we're, we're high school sweethearts. We've been together since grade 11 and a grade 11. Uh, we've been together almost 20 years. Wow. Uh, um, you know, I still didn't want to have kids, but you know, we got married, we've been married for 11 or 12 years this year. No, it'd be 12 years this year we've been married for, uh, actually November. And, uh, you know, after a while it was like, well, she wants kids. I don't, but like, why wouldn't I want to start something incredible with this woman? Right. You know what I mean? If this makes her happy and she makes me happy, I want to make her happy. And this is what she wants. She's dreamt of this her whole life. Right. So, you know, it took us a while, you know, to have kids, 12 years to have kids. You know what I mean? It was, um, there, there were some issues there, right? We tried, we tried, we tried. And, and, you know, um, you know, so we, we went and seen some doctors and I did some shit into a cup, you know, <laughs> and, <laughs> uh, it was really weird. And, uh, you know, it was, I just needed some time off. I had my appendectomy and I was off work for like a couple months and it was my wife's birthday actually. And, and, you know, she's like, Hey, can you do this right now? And I'm like, I don't know. You might have to do all the work. And she's like, par for the course. Right. Like, yeah, I, I always do all the work. What's different. Right. So, <laughs> all right. So it was her birthday and, and that's, I think we can do the math and it ends up being back on there. And, you know, it was a couple months later. She's like, or not a couple months, a few weeks later. And she's like, Hey, I'm, I'm pregnant. And it's like, Oh shit. Yeah. So we tried, we tried. Our kids will never think that this was an accident. We tried, we wanted this. Right. So, um, so we did that. And my wife, uh, she showed me, uh, she told me she was pregnant by sending me, I'm a big Toronto Maple Leaf fan. She got me a Toronto Maple Leaf pacifier. She's like, Hey, and I'm like, Oh, shut up. Really? And then we announced that she was pregnant online. I was actually taking a social media break that year, 2017. I, I got off Facebook for the entire year. I was only on Twitter. I never used Twitter that much. I was only on Twitter. I started a war with the Britney Spears fan club on Twitter. It was bad. And, uh, it was funny, actually. I'm not going to say what I said, but, um, we, I went back on to Facebook for the day and I posted a picture of two adult sized Toronto Maple Leaf jerseys next to each, uh, next to each other. And in the center, a, an infant Toronto Maple Leaf Jersey and Austin Matthews, my favorite player who plays for the Leafs, um, their new captain actually uh he he had just got drafted that year or no he had his first season and he scored a lot he won the rookie of the year um i captioned it Trump, matt austin matthews isn't the only one who scored a lot this year right and i posted it up there and it was incredible right and so we did that and then for you know a couple years later two and a half years later number two comes along we're, we were trying and then we were moving back east right like i said and we're like okay let's shelf this until another time okay well i must have snuck one past the goalie obviously before she left and well so much for shelving that right and how we announced that one 
I love Cards Against Humanity. Big Cards Against Humanity fan. And I was, you know, across the country, up north working, and I had my Cards Against Humanity card deck with me, and I had to email, I had not email, I had to mail her two cards, or yeah, two cards to for a pregnancy announcement. It's like, and for my next trick, I'll pull blank out of my blank. And <laughs> the, the white card said, uh, for the blanks, was fetus and vagina. For my next trick, I'll pull a fetus out of my vagina, right? And I said that to her, and that's how we announced. We announced that way for the second one. And, you know, like, it's been, fuck, my youngest is four here, and my Aww. oldest is going to be seven in a, less than, a, not less than, just about a month. She'll be seven. So we're, yeah, it's it's been an interesting almost decade. I guess she's a quarter of the way to adulthood, or a third of the way, sorry. Did you find out what you were having? Yeah, yeah, we did. And my coworkers were bugging me the second time. They're like, you're only having girls, but you're doomed, right? And sure enough, the second one was, I don't care. I don't care. You know what? Like, it is what it is, and we're having a good time either way. The, let me tell you, my my youngest, she's smarter beyond, she's smart beyond her years. It is wild, you know? Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. My, uh. I didn't find out with my first three and then I found out with my last one. Yeah. Um, yeah. Though she, she says some pretty off the wall stuff. She's identical. She's an identical twin to my wife looks identical, but her characteristics and the things she says is all me. And like, they're very headstrong and they're, it's like, uh, I don't want to like snuff that out of them. Right. I want them to be, you know, they're going to be badass women. And, it's just a hard to parent badass women who are independent, right? They don't want to take no shit from no one. And I want them to, I want to raise them like that, but like take shit from your parents while you're growing up. You know what I mean? Like you got to learn how to eat a shit sandwich sometimes. And like, it's so frustrating for me because I go to work and I, and, and I'm not a boss there, right? I'm not a boss. I have no say I'm ordered around all the time. I come home and I'm ordered around all the time. He's <laughs> like, Oh, all right. I'll just sit here and, and, and just be, be a person that gets shit on all the time <laughs> oh man i know it's it's so crazy like what you think marriage is gonna be like versus what it actually is yep um i don't want to keep it too much longer you got a lunch to go to um and i gotta go pick up my daughter from from school actually she she's four she just started play school or preschool Aww. whatever it is and uh, she's excited that she's there. And I got to take her this morning because I had a random day off. So like, she was pumped that dad got to go to school with me this morning, right? And uh, it was pretty cool. Um, I, I like to wrap the podcast up uh, with one last question. And, you know, Mount Rushmore has four of the most influential people on, on The Rock. You know, people you look up to, inspired to be here, that inspired you. If you could have your own Mount Rushmore, four people that you look up to, who would they be and why? Ooh, that's a good question. So... Obviously my dad, because yeah. he's always somebody who I can call and has been like my confidant, yeah. probably his mother too, because she, she gave, uh, she gave me my dad and she goes deep and she's going to be 96 this year. And I just love her. My daughter, I, it's funny. I really wanted a son, but a daughter is, is very special to have and I'm going to go with my husband because he gave me all these amazing kids and I wouldn't want to do it with anybody else. That's amazing. I love that. I love that. Yeah. My dad's on mine too, but for completely different reasons. When I look up on that rock, I see um, a, a someone that I strive not to be. I, I go a different way, right? I look up, I'm like, what would he do? Oh shit. Okay. I'm doing something completely different then, right? Because my dad, we have our issues, you know, like uh, we haven't talked in four years. We We have a lot of things you know, built up over the years that, you know, um, he taught me the value of the dollar and what it takes to earn it. He took me to work with him when I was 11, introduced me to blue collar life, you know, but um, other than that, we've had a pretty tumultuous relationship. Growing up as a kid, he was Superman to me, right? Mm. And when you grow up and you become, an, become a man and you realize that Superman's cape had holes in it and that shit hurts, right? Like uh, I got a lot of mental health shit, right? That I've worked through over the years and my wife helps me work through and what not and a lot of that has to do with my childhood and we're trying to you know break that cycle right so like it's you know it's a lot of that better call daddy better call daddy uh rena thanks for coming on and i this has been really fun and incredible and enjoy your lunch um before you go you want to tell people where they can find your podcast or find you on social media 
Thank you so much for that. You're an incredible host. I'm so glad that we are connecting when we're connecting. You Absolutely. can find me at bettercalldaddy.com. And I think you should connect with me on LinkedIn so I can make you some connections to all these oil and gas people that I'm meeting. You can find me on LinkedIn, Instagram, and all social media at Rena Friedman Watts. And that's Friedman spelled like fried man. <laughs> I love that. I love that. All right. Hey, Rena, thanks for coming on. Maybe we'll get you back on. Well, not maybe. I love reconnecting. So we'll definitely have you back on. But Rena, stay frosty. I loved it. Thank you so much.